Rub up your engines! This here is my brand new previously owned Lincoln Aviator. That's right, Aviator, not Navigator like most people assume. It's an Aviator. Now, the big difference is the Aviator is based on the Ford Explorer, where the Navigator is based on the Ford Expedition. Now, there, besides the obvious size difference, this is somewhat shorter, about six inches less height, and somewhat shorter in, in wheelbase. There's some other major differences. Number one, this came factory standard with a standard coil coilover strut suspension. Navigator, on the other hand, had air suspension. And if you just Google anything about Nat Lincoln Navigator air suspension, you'll find that is the main point of failure on all the old Navigators. So this Aviator has no such problems. In fact, this particular one I have seems to work just perfectly. I just picked it up. I haven't had it more than a few days. It's beautiful. It's been owned by only one other person. This poor guy spent $50,000 after tax on it back in 2003, and I bought it for pocket change. So he lost pretty much all of his money thanks to depreciation, and I got a perfect vehicle owned by a single dude uh, for 17 years. This is a 2003. I'm filming this in 2019. And they're, right now they're selling 2020 cars, so it's 17 years old. And yet, it works perfectly. There's just nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. It's wrapped in black from the top up to kind of get like that Range Rover-esque feel, which is, I think, pretty cool. Um, it's got these keypads here, which is really neat because you can open the, uh, open the doors if you lock your keys inside. You can never really get locked out of that as long as you know they're the combination. Well, the other thing that's pretty cool is if you hit the bottom two buttons, this works by the way on all Ford-based vehicles, it will lock all the doors. So, will it, so you don't actually remove your keys from the pocket to lock the doors. Back in the day, before they made cars with keyless entry, Yes, it does still use a key. It is a little old school in that department, but the car is like 17 years old, so you know, what do you expect? It's pretty freaking big though. It's got seven seats, and even with seven seats, check out the amount of cargo space. This is a third row back here, and there's plenty of space. Now, if I put the th third row down, it becomes cavernous, and if I put the second row down, I've had two 70-inch televisions in the back of this at the same time already. For an SUV, this is quite a luxurious interior. I gotta say, it's very nice. There's fake wood everywhere, and some of the wood is actually real, so I understand. I think these are real, Those, these little segments are real, and the steering wheel is real. But honestly, you almost can't tell the fake wood from the real wood. They all kind of look the same. Mind you, this is Lincoln. This is not Jaguar. It's not like made out of some special wood that they get out of a forest that's endangered or something crazy like that. This is probably pine or something <laughs> polished to look like mahogany or something. But still, it's super elegant inside. You have ample, ample, ample storage space. I mean, straight up. There's storage in the doors up here, storage down there, storage in the center like most vehicles. That one happens to have a power connector in there, an additional power connector in the ashtray as normal cars have, and a third one in the back of the console down there. Um, normal glove compartment. Nothing so special there. Cup holders down here. But it's big. It's really, really big. It's got space for everything. There's actually door storage in the rear passengers as well, although they don't give you this one. I don't know why they didn't give you the door up here, only the lower card storage. I am six feet tall. That's approximately 182 centimeters. I'm totally laying down in this vehicle, perfectly flat, and there's enough space. Now, mind you, my head is on the headrest, so it is exactly six feet in length, and if you had a rectangular something, you'd probably hit the back seats. However, this is quite admirable for cargo space. You could straight up sleep in here and just sort of hang out, tailgate. I mean, you could tailgate here and you could have a full-size refrigerator sit here with maybe a barbecue out the back and just totally hook up. I mean, this is crazy, this vehicle, it's huge. Easily, my favorite feature of this car is the seat heaters and the seat coolers. They blow with enormous force. I've never felt a seat heater fan where it blows it through the seat where you put your hand up here above your crotch, essentially, and you get this, you can actually feel the air emanating out of the seat. It's like 
literally they put some super high powered fan inside these seats to get the air circulating out it's amazing sometimes you're sitting there and your hand is on the steering wheel in the lower portion and you just feel air emanating out the bottom of the seat it's crazy enjoyable when it's a cold day and you just get this warmth coming out oh my god it's wonderful i don't know why old cars don't put really powerful fans in the seat heaters to come out the perforations in the seats this one does it. I love it. I never felt another car that does it though. They really all should. 4.6 liter, 300 horsepower V8 power, man. It's awesome, it's big, and it's covered by plastic, so there isn't really much to see here. But when you put your hand right over here, that gap between the radiator and the engine block, wow, that's a lot of air coming out of that thing. It feels like, like it's a heater blowing hot air up on you. You could cook eggs on this engine real quick. It's running warm. The temperature gauge on the inside says it's by design. It's within spec of where it's supposed to be. The way the interior lights up on this car is probably the most beautiful aspect of it. Everything has this nice white glow to everything. These li LED lighting just comes on and it just, it makes you feel like you're in a really nice luxury vehicle. But yet, it's a 300 horsepower workhorse. This thing is phenomenal. I am right now in the third row of my Lincoln Aviator. Look at this. I got plenty of leg room. I'm not even small at all. There's ample room for another passenger beside me. There's big, huge armrests with cup holders that have wood around them. This is incredible. This is the back seat. I mean, I'm not cramped in the slightest. Look at this. This is the hugest third row back seat I've ever tried to get myself into. Most cars I can't even fit. This one is spacious. If you have kids, you can easily get three kids back here, but unfortunately there's only two seat belts, so I wouldn't advise that. But this is huge. Look at this, man. I'm loving this. I'm in the third row, just so you could see, this is the back seat, that's the front seat. You legit can fit eight people in here if there was a middle seat belt and the three people in the back were small. But seven people, totally comfortable, seven adults, not seven kids like some cars claim. This is straight up seven adults, totally comfortable, leather seats. Actually, I read that the third row is fake leather and the front two rows are real leather, but honestly, I can't tell the difference. It looks like real leather and they look exactly the same the third row and the, and the back seat row. So it's a Lincoln. It has all sorts of creature comforts that you'd expect from a luxury car, but it doesn't exactly compete with like European cars like the Range Rovers. However, it does come close. I mean, you have automatic headlights over there. You have power seats with lumbar controls and you got other cool creature comfort things like adjustable pedals which, I don't know, I'm kind of big, so I don't really need that, but I guess short people will, would probably appreciate that. And cool little touches like the analog clock over here. That's another one that's nice. Um, it's got a trip computer over here, and that's about it. One of the neat features on this particular SUV is that the rear seats on either side, but not the middle, can actually rec recline a few notches and sort of get a lean back thing going on. Unfortunately, the middle one doesn't do that. That is fixed in place, but you do have a recline on the outer two seats, which is pretty nice if someone wants to like sleep in the back. Um, but if you really want to sleep, you just kind of put the seats all the way down to the floor and the rear ones come down and then there's actually a panel that goes between it and you get a completely flat platform all the way to the rear of the vehicle, which is pretty much more than big enough for a big dude like me to sleep comfortably. I could probably throw a mattress in here and double, and th this could double as like an overnight when you compare the Lincoln Navigator and the Lincoln Aviator, there isn't a huge difference in size, but the Navigator's a few inches longer and a little bit taller, and that's about it. Um, capacity inside is also obviously bigger than the Navigator, but the Aviator is still huge. So, I don't know. I love this. It's big, it's huge, and it stores everything I need and still fits in my garage. Unlike the Navigator, which I tried and doesn't fit in my garage. The dashboard is probably the coolest part of this car. You don't actually see any of the mechanism that holds the arrow, the arms that fling back and forth with the speedometer. So it looks like just you have these like floating red LED things. Now, sometimes when the sun is really bright, you can't actually see the arms that hold them 
that wasn't intended. And, and you do realize that all this is is a normal, very bright dashboard with a tinted material over it. So you don't actually see anything below it other than the lit up parts. But it's really neat. This is quite a fun car to drive, I gotta admit. You're really high off the road. You don't have to worry if you drive over something like a pothole or something, because nothing's gonna happen to the vehicle. It sort of takes whatever you throw at it and just runs with it like a champ. This thing can haul something like 7,000 pounds in towing. Uh, you can throw cargo in this well over one ton of cargo, probably with no problem. This thing just hauls, You have it's like completely carefree. And it isn't even a slow vehicle. That's the crazy thing about it. This 300 horsepower V6, V8 4.6 liter engine does something like the high sevens in zero to 60 time, meaning zero to 60 and seven point something. Now that may not be winning any land speed records, but my God, this thing is two and a half tons and it hauls cargo and holds seven passengers. That's quite respectable. I mean, honestly, if you can do zero to 60 in under eight seconds in two and a, with two and a half tons and maybe an added ton of cargo, you're doing really well, especially the fact that this vehicle is approaching 20 years old. It's 17 as of Carly, and it's in perfect shape. There's just nothing wrong with it. Let's talk a little about gas mileage, shall we? If you care, this is not the vehicle for you. My other vehicle is a V12 BMW. They both get the same mileage. This is a 4.6 liter V8, and they both get a little under 10 miles per gallon. So if you care about gas mileage, and I don't think you should, mind you, but if you do, this is not the vehicle for you. Now, why do I say you shouldn't care about gas mileage? Because the average driver drives 12,000 miles a year. That means if you're driving a vehicle that gets 10 miles per gallon, 1,200 gallons of fuel per year, which is about $3,600 here in New York. Now, $3,600 a year may sound like a lot of money, except that if you drove a hybrid car that gets twice that kind of gas mileage or better, you'd only be saving about I don't know, $1,800 a year. Now, this is an old car that's already depreciated. The first owner ate up the entire cost of the depreciation already. I can probably sell this for close to what I paid for it two, three years from now. If you bought a new car or a hybrid or anything else that cost a lot, it will depreciate much more than that $1,800 a year that you save on gas. Well, that was this week's video. And remember to have your car video highlighted here on my channel. Check this out. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.